Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. We are so excited. We have best-selling children's author Lisa Yi here with their new series. It's called DC Superhero Girls. And the first book was Wonder Woman at Superhero High. And the new book, just out in July, Superhero Girl at Superhero High. You'll find out all about these super girls when they were in high school. So welcome back to Anderson's in Naperville. Thank you. It's always great to be here. Well, we're so great to have you here with DC Superhero Girls. I know. Oh my gosh. As your shirt That's tells right. us why you're super here. Supergirl. Supergirl. You are super author. So Thank we are you. so glad to have Thank you Thank you. Here. You know, this whole series that you're doing now is so very different from your previous children's novels. It How is. How does it feel? Because you have two books out in the series and both in this year. You've been a busy <laughs> author. I have been very busy. Um, yeah. It's It's been incredible. What what had happened was my, my agent kept saying to me, something's going to happen but I can't tell you what it is. Aww. And I was like, what? You oh, know? Yeah, but I had written this book called Warp Speed. Yeah. And in the book, the boy is obsessed with Star Trek. There's a lot of Batman. There's a lot of Star Wars in there. And so the people at Random House in D.C. had read that book. And mm -hmm. later I was told, and like, this is like the ultimate compliment, they said, you are just the right amount of geek. Oh, well, hey. I, uh, that's, that's a like, huge compliment. That's like tombstone <laughs> kind of thing, you know, because it's like yeah. you get it, but you're not over the top. And... And so they were, you know, they were looking for an author to write these books, not necessarily yeah. a comic book writer. Yeah. So yeah. yay, I guess so, I do so it. So have you always been a DC lover, or have you been the Marvel universe? You know, who, you know, Actually, it's that? it has been DC because I came into the superheroes through television. Okay. Sure. And I love the Batman series. The Adam West. Adam West. <laughs> I was in love with Robin. I had decided that I was going to marry him, and then. Wonder Woman came out, you know, with Linda Carter, yeah, and, yeah, you know, right. and so even though I still wanted to marry Robin, I wanted to be Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's been so, great. So with Wonder Woman, the first book in the series, mm -hmm. did you think back to Linda Carter and all that? And, you know, I'm just wondering, you know, when, when DC asks you to do something like this, yeah. you feel a certain... Um, Fear. Uh, well, fear, <laughs> you know? but also honoring the, the traditions yeah. of, of these characters that have become such a part of our culture. Ooh. And with multiple generations. Oh, you know? when, when I first yeah. started, and, and Wonder Woman was the first, I, I, like, I just went into research mode. Mm -hmm. And I started reading all the old things, okay. and Jill Lepore's Wonder Woman book, and all this, and then I realized, you know what? They aren't asking me to write what's already been written. They are asking me to write for a new generation. Yeah. And so I started thinking about this, and you know, it's it's the it's the teenage superheroes when they're at Superhero High, yeah. and when I realized I wasn't writing about superheroes who were in high school, I was you know superheroes who were teenagers. I was writing about teenagers who were superheroes. Right. It, it actually had a, a calming effect on me. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know, I, I thought they're they're so great because they're like normal kids but they just happen to be superheroes. Oh yeah, they, they've got they're, these powers yeah. and right. not only do they have these powers, they're not in control of them yet right. because they're, they're still learning and so we've got this alternate universe where we've got the superheroes and the supervillains and they're all mm -hmm. the same age and they're all in high school together and the thing was that I know how they're going to end up. Uh, they don't know, so I'm able to seed the stories. Ah, so, so you, have, you have this arc. Oh, oh yeah, because you, you, know, you know what they're going to be. Because I can adults, see in the future. That's the right. Future. That's my superpower. But yeah. Yeah, but so some of the storylines is it sort of, you know what they're going to be as an as adult women, right? Yes. And, and we know that they're strong women, and and I mean physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. But you sort of know where they're going, so you can create a storyline that sort of takes them. That right. Way. I mean, it's it's like for example, like Wonder Woman. Yeah. And, you know, she's come from Paradise Island, this, this island of strong Amazon women, 
and she's never really seen boys before. I mean, she's rescued them, but she's never really seen them. And so, like, I know that later on she and Steve Trevor kind of have a thing. And so, like, I'm, I'm writing the scene where she first sees him, and, and she thinks he has these powers because he's got this metal on his teeth. And they're braces, but, but she looks at him and he smiles and suddenly she feels weak and she's like, what is he doing to me? You know, yeah, I mean, right. so she doesn't get it. Yeah. But, you know, I'm able to see these sort of things into the storylines. And what's right. great, too, is that, you know, some of the stuff I'm writing is canon. You know, I'm, I'm able, to, sure. I'm able yeah. to do that. And uh, DC's been great. Like, for example, like Wonder Woman. Um, you know, I had always wondered about her cuffs, cuffs right. like how, how did she get them and where did they come from? And I was researching and I was like, well, I don't really know. Nobody actually really, you know, specific about that. Right. So I wrote this scene where she's leaving Paradise Island and her mother really doesn't want her to go to Superhero High. But, but she says to her mother, you know, you, how can I save the world if I don't know the world? Right. And I have to leave the island to find that out. And when she was little, she was always trying on her mother's clothes and her cuffs and everything, and they never fit. But on that day, for the first time, they fit. You know, so I'm able to write right. that okay. sort of yeah. thing. It's sort of those, those coming of age stories. Exactly. Yeah, yeah right. that's what right. it is. And, you know, when you think about, you know, the new Wonder Woman, uh, Val Goodot, is that, is mm -hmm. that her name? Yes. The actress? I mean... You know, thinking this is this is I think this is who kids now will think well, that, they, that is the Wonder Woman who's going to be. Well, you know, I do a lot of comic cons, and I remember my first one. I was terrified because I'm <laughs> like, what if they say, why? Are, what are you doing to our people? What are you doing to our superheroes? You know. And so what I had said was, everybody knows what the moon looks like. Right. It's it's the same moon that we're all looking at. But we each have a different interpretation of it, and it doesn't mean that moon's going to change. And so I'm writing my interpretation of the superheroes. You still have yours. That will never change. But I'm writing another version of it. Yeah, right. So you know, I was wondering. You know, that these are these are like typical high school girls mm -hmm. and their friends and that sort of thing, and the same and their same, enemies and, and their enemies and the cliques and the, all mm -hmm. the. So were you channeling yourself, or even thinking about your own daughters? You know, thinking about you know thinking about what high school is really like and what it does to you. Oh, absolutely. Emotionally and intellectually and all those. Absolutely, types of things. because you know I have all these these strong women, these strong young women in the book. But I write a lot, and the great thing about writing novels is that you can really go in depth in terms of the emotion and the characterization. So none of them are as they present, yeah. because they all present as so strong and they've got it together. But I'm able to write about their fears, and, and, and for example, for Supergirl at Superhero High, you know, I, I went on uh, Facebook, because I'm always on Facebook, a little too much, and I asked everyone, I said, what one word? do you think of when you think of Supergirl? And I had like a couple hundred replies and everybody oh. is saying like strength and flight and this and that. Nobody thought of the one word that I used because whenever I write, my, I always give my main character a single word. Oh, I put okay. it on a post-it, I put it on my computer and when I write, I remember that word and I know that has to be addressed by the end of the story. Oh. So my word for Supergirl was loss. Right. Because her entire planet had exploded, her she family. lost her family, she lost everything, right. and you know she she's hurtling through Earth, and she she's never had powers before. She's getting powers for the first time, and she can't control them. And so suddenly, she has to go to Superhero High, and she has to learn how to control her powers and everything. But people have heard of her; they've heard that the strongest girl in the world is there. But yeah. she's she's still grieving. Well, she's grieving, but she also she's an outsider. She's, she's a total an alien outsider. She's in a, in, a, in, a, in a very different place. Absolutely. But she's, yeah, but that's that makes so much sense. Showing how how the story is going to go because she is lost. In she a, is so lost. Many ways. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like she, you know, when there's parent night, she's oh, she's yeah. she's thinking about that. Although Amanda Waller, who's the principal, um, tells her, well, you know, actually, if you look around, a, a lot of students here have lost right. their parents. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and who was what was the one where you used for the Wonder Woman? For Wonder Woman, Destiny. Ah, uh, okay. you know, I mean, it only it only seemed right to start with Wonder sure, Woman because sure. everybody, you know, she she's one of the most iconic superheroes, male or female, right. around, and and she had this destiny. So she didn't have, she didn't have any of the, uh, the the fears that Supergirl had. She she always felt like she belonged, but what she dealt with was, am I going to live up to my mother's expectations? Sure. Right. And I think that a lot of kids have that. You know, their parents expect a lot of them. Right. But she came from a place of such powerful women. Yes, and, yeah, absolutely. So that would be, yeah, that destiny kind of thing. I love the way you threw in different characters. 
that we know from 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 these storylines and I just thought it was great the way they were sprinkled in and especially for Supergirl her friend Barbara Gordon oh but I love oh, Barbara Gordon, Gordon. I love and you know, Barbara Gordon we all kind of know because well it, she becomes Batgirl and actually yeah. I can tell you that that will be the next book well that's what I was wondering yeah Batgirl's gonna, gonna be, be next yeah. I, I love that because you know whereas the superheroes are great with they have superpowers right. Any one of us can be Batgirl right. because, you know, her superpower is actually that she's curious and smart. And so it was so fun writing about her and, and her dad and her the dynamics right. with her relationship and with Supergirl because they were actually kind of two outsiders coming together because in Supergirl's book, Batgirl is not a student there yet. Right. Batgirl she's, works she's, there. She works there. She's like the IT. She's the, the tech IT, whiz. Yeah, the tech whiz. Exactly. But she would love to be a student. Oh, that's that was her dream. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that part. But how things are sprinkled in. Yeah. Lois Lane. I mean, in different books, you know, you, I love the way you sprinkle all oh, these characters you. that we all know. Yeah. And that thing. So since uh, Wonder Woman came out in March, mm -hmm. and now this one just came out in July. Yes. Um, what are you hearing from kids? Because they've had some summer reading that, that, that's yeah. been really great. So, so what are you hearing from kids directly about this? I'm well. It's it's very exciting. I'm hearing from boys and girls. Oh, that's good. I mean, I, you know, because you know, I thought, well, maybe because it's a it's a female superhero. No, but I'm hearing from boys and girls how much they love them or who's their favorite. I'm always getting these letters of them telling me, and this is who you need to write about next. You know, so yeah. that's been very exciting. But also, what's exciting is I'm hearing from parents. Oh, great. I'm hearing from so many parents, especially dads, who have uh -huh. wanted to bring their daughters into the superhero world and they, they were, there was no vehicle right. for them before and, and suddenly there is. Yeah. And, and being as a middle grade, I think middle grade readers are not as jaded as, mm -hmm. as, yes. as YA readers or teen yes. readers, which is so good. And also too, I think these books are great for maybe that little bit more reluctant reader too mm -hmm. because it does have those characters they already know but now they're going to learn all about them at a different time in their oh, life. Oh, exactly. So, yeah, so because wonderful. they have, you know, a lot of the readers, they have an image, they know who they are, but they don't know their background. Right. And so you're right, I'm able to introduce the background to them and, and put little fun things and actually some sad things in there. Um, I know that this one mother wrote to me about Supergirl's book because there are parts that are very sad. Mm -hmm. And she said that, you know, that her girls couldn't stop crying, but they also couldn't stop reading. Yeah, because they wanted yeah, to know what yeah. was going to happen. Right. So, you know, I, I try to do that. I try to balance action and humor and heartbreak all together. Right. And a, a special librarian in this book sort of befriends her, makes, makes her more welcome. In this there book. is a, a librarian in the story, Granny Goodness, yeah. and uh, you'll yeah. have to read it to find yeah, out oh, what makes her so special. That's right. So, no, yeah. we're not doing any spoilers here. No right. spoilers. Yeah. Here. So, you are having a, a crazy year. Five or six books? Uh, five books five out this books. year. Yeah. So you have another American Girl series. You've uh, already done one. Uh, yeah. I had done um, Kanani, which is a girl from Hawaii, and I had also done a historical book oh, that's right. about yeah. a girl named Ivy Ling in San Francisco. I wrote this year's Leah books. So there are wow. three of them, and it's about a girl from St. Louis who goes to Brazil. Now I hear you. You have to do a little research. I was forced to go to Brazil. Yeah, I, oh, awful. I oh, went to man. Brazil. I went to. I went snorkeling in the coral reefs because wow. that's what she did. And then I went three thousand miles away. I went to the Amazon rainforest. Cool. And I was in the rainforest. I, I don't know how smart this is, but I, I swam in the Amazon River by myself. I mean, you know, and uh, and then impressed. later I went You're a and. Girl. <laughs> or dumb, but um, yeah. So you yeah. know, I, I went yeah. there, and um, on my website, lisa.com, you'll see pictures of me with a baby sloth and an alligator oh. and a boa constrictor around my neck, oh, and I look oh. like I'm smiling, but I'm actually terrified. <laughs> so um, you know, because it was funny, because last year I was working on five books, but because they were for American Girl and for DC, I was not allowed to talk about them. So oh, it looked like wow. you are I looked like I was a feel. slacker. Because I'm, I'm all I'm doing so you is couldn't working. do anything on social media, nothing. You had to. Be, I couldn't talk about yeah, it at all, right. but I, I still wanted to be present, and, and I was writing and writing, and, and you know, my other publisher, Scholastic, kept saying, "When are you going to write something for us?" It's like, and so I just said, "I'm having personal issues." <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't know what to so say. You did, you did tell them the truth. I Eventually, I did. Yeah, right. Once you know, yeah. once I was able to, I was able to tell everyone. But um, yeah. until then, until I got the okay, yeah. it was like, mm mm. In, in a way, though, that's kind of you're you're writing under the you know the the, 
the darkness of night. Yes, and, and that's very mysteriously. Yeah. So yes. that, that's really cool. So, you know, these worlds that, that these are set in and knowing that, you know, when these worlds were created for the superheroes and now you're sort of making a different world. Mm -hmm. You know, the world building I always find so interesting that, you know, in Superman's world and yes. Supergirl's world, this, this planet of Krypton and everything. And then when you think of Paradise Island and all that, you had to build the world of this school. Mm -hmm. And so putting those elements together of a traditional high school, but also putting in those things of, that would be a superhero high school. Oh, it, did it, you have fun with that? I am having the best time. You know, <laughs> as I always say, like, you know, my job right now is thinking of ways to destroy the world and then to save it. Right. You know, right. and and in creating the high school, you know, we have classes like weaponomics, and you know, the costume design class where you know your your costume has to be functional and fun and have a lot of form because you know you're you're battling in it, and so you know I'm writing all that kind of stuff, and the teachers. And the administration are all ex superheroes or ex supervillains, also. Right, right. But then I was also tying in things that I remember from high school about, like when you're in a boring class, you know, what are you doing? Or when you have, you know, when you when you have that that student that's picking on you. Right. But they're picking on each other in different ways because they're superheroes. Yeah. So I was able to just kind of like take everything that I knew and then ramp it up. Yeah. And you know, I think it's it's so. Kids in, in who are reading middle grade mm -hmm. love to read about kids that are older than yes. you. Yes. So yeah. I think, so you're combining superheroes and you're combining some high great school. high school and some great girl characters. Mm -hmm. It's a real winning combination. And, and the thing is, I think what's so great about these, and I, I, I'm so glad you did not have any of male superheroes coming to anyone's rescues, rescue, because these girls can handle it themselves. Yes. You know? They're self-sufficient. You know they're brave. They're, well, they're strong, obviously, but they're also they're they're intellectual and they know how to handle something, or they can they'll find a way. Yeah, they yeah. they they find a way, and and we even have we have these superhero girls rescuing boys a lot in them. I mean yeah. because I mean yeah. that happens, right. and even yeah. though there are boys in the school, and you know there, there's a lot of play with the boys and the girls back and forth and mm -hmm. things like that, and they're in classes together. I'm focusing on the females. I'm yeah. focusing on the girls, and even girls who don't get along. You know, like like Cheetah, you know, or, or or Frost, or others who might not get along with with Wonder Woman or Supergirl. When it comes down to it, if there's an epic battle or something, everything is tossed aside and they come together right. as a unit. Yeah, yeah. Now, in the future, and we don't have, you don't have to tell us, but maybe would you ever consider some of the villains that um, maybe they you know get kicked out of the superhero high school? Would I consider kicking them out, or would I consider would writing, writing about them? them? About some of the. Well, you know what? Absolutely. You know, like Harley Quinn. Right. She is prominent in the books, and so here's the thing: she's not a villain in the story yet. yet. We know how she ends up, but because they're all in high school, they don't know yet. I mean, I don't think people go to high school. At least I hope they don't go and say like, "When I get out of here, I'm going to be a super villain." No, you know, things happen to kids in high school, things happen to kids in middle school that help determine who they're gonna be. So when I'm writing about these characters, I'm able to see the stories knowing what's gonna happen. You know, yeah. Poison Ivy is in the book and, and she's lovely. You know, but, but you know, like I've got Harley and she's got her own video channel, Harley's Quintessentials. And she's more concerned with getting her ratings up than she is with making friends. So that's kind of like, uh -huh. You it's know, a little, putting a little yeah. bit in there so that you kind of see. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. It's foreshadowing. Yeah, you get right. to know her character. Yeah. You know, it's interesting with Supergirl because of the TV show. Mm -hmm. And also for Wonder Woman, uh, an animated, mm -hmm. you know, some series. But also the, the on there's online components to these. There's merchandising. There's action figures. It's sort of, it's, it's sort of like a whole thing. But the, these books are so set aside from all that. In, in my yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the 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 books are almost their own world. Right. Yeah. You know, they everything complements each other. Right. Right. But you know, I look at the books as the opportunity to really go in depth yeah. with these characters yeah. because in the books they're not cartoon figures. They're 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 fully fleshed out characters. Right. So, writing these, when you sat down to write these, how different did you approach this than when you wrote some of your previous novels? And knowing that you have a certain arc. 
do you sit down to outline this or you know you're, you're building your world because there is there is differences in this high school mm -hmm. even though it seems like a, a regular high school so was it was it a different sort of experience sitting down that knew you knew that you had to write for a certain character and a certain development compared to your other it, it was completely different it yeah. was completely different because when I first came on board I was given a Bible not a religious Bible but a Bible of characters uh -huh. of all the DC characters you know so that I could know about them and what I do for each story is I write an extensive outline because not only does Random House need to look at it but Warner Brothers Entertainment and uh -huh. DC Comics they all look at that okay. and so we actually spend more time on the outline and so like DC is looking at it not necessarily from from a story standpoint but from from the character standpoint right. because I look to them as the experts with all this and I might have one character doing something and they might suggest well you can use that character or mm -hmm. have you ever thought of this and it might be a character that I had not heard of that I was not okay. familiar with and then I'll go research and I'll I'll do that but but once the outline is complete then I start writing okay okay but there, you're, there's still those parts where you're surprising yourself with some of the action that's taking place. It's, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I will have a general idea. I always kind of do a synopsis so that I, I know what's going to happen. And, you know, I have this idea in my head. And then I'll start writing plot points because I know that, like, I think that my strength is character. And so I know that I can flesh out the character, but the plot points are, are very specific, especially because there's so much action. Right. in these books. So, you know, I know this is going to happen, I know this is going to happen in this, and then along the way as I'm writing it, things reveal themselves to me in terms of the character development and, and why they made choices that they did or why they made choices that they didn't. Right. So how many, how many um, when you think about it, how many DC female superheroes are there? I never, you know, I just... I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? That's a good question. I don't. I don't. There's a lot more male there, characters, obviously. There, but, but there's. But how many women are there that are really? You know, that there, there aren't. As, as you say, there aren't nearly as many that are yeah. known. Right. As you know, but I mean, the characters that I'm writing about, you know, Wonder Woman, Batgirl, um, you know, uh, Super, yeah, Supergirl. Um, but I also write about Katana. I'm writing about Poison Ivy mm -hmm. and Harley Quinn and Bumblebee. Right. And so these other characters, Hot Girl, Miss Martian, that I'm hoping will be able to rise to right, the top yeah. and then we'll get to meet these new ones. Yeah, which I think would be really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. About them. So tell us about you know you as a writer and and obviously you are a voracious reader because you write about other authors writing and other books that you love all the time mm -hmm. but what's your first recollection of wanting to be a writer and do you remember what that first thing you wrote that wow <laughs> i'm a writer <laughs> i i remember the first story i ever wrote it was about a giant yam fun and i think it's squished a farmer and I, it, it was like, I was like, I don't know, maybe eight <laughs> or something. Um, but I remember that, that being the first story. But I, I knew at a very young age that I wanted to be yeah. an author. But I was, I was too afraid to tell anyone. I, I thought yeah. that they might laugh at me. Oh. And, you know, I wanted yeah. it so badly that I thought yeah. I couldn't do it. So, you know, all, all through school, even though through college, I kept telling everyone I was going to go to law school. Yeah. Because I thought that that's what I wanted to do. And, and you know, I, I think I came to this game late. I didn't become an author until I was in my 40s. Yeah. Well, we're so glad you didn't go to law school. I am too. Okay. You know, I mean, and I did lots of, I had like lots lots of writing jobs. Yeah. But But even though they weren't writing books, I thought I was writing stories. Because I would write things like television commercials. Right. Beginning, middle, and I wrote the Red Lobster menus, which I thought of as a story. Because it had, you know, appetizer, entree, dessert, beginning, right. middle, and end. You know, I, I worked at, at Disney as a as a writer producer yeah. and, and even though so I wasn't writing books but you know but you I, were I practicing writing those stories your craft. I was writing dialogue yeah. and so right. it it all kind of came together I eventually bet you made that menu sound a lot better or read a lot better than it tasted actually golden fried shrimp oh there you go oh. yeah I yeah. am so impressed yeah but all those different writing experiences mm -hmm. they had they have to have provided you with great fodder for what you're doing oh, now. Oh, right? absolutely they did. Yeah. I, I used to write, you know, like I said, for, for Red Lobster, I used to write a lot of food commercials. And I wrote a young adult novel called Absolutely Maybe. 
and she works on a food right. truck oh, that's or a great. taco truck. Yes, right. And so whenever yeah. I, you know, I'd write these scenes about the, the sizzling onions and all this kind of stuff. And then I get these letters still about people going like, I have to have tacos. I'm in the middle of your book and I have to have tacos. But, you know, I think that uh, that all writing that we do informs sure. our books. I mean, even if it's a shopping list, yeah. you know, it's like, right. like, you know, it's like, OK, that, that tells a lot about the character. Right. So for sure. So. Batgirl will be coming next. Yes. And that, will that be next year? Batgirl, I think, is January 3rd or the first week of January. Okay. And the next book in the Leah Clark series? I mean, how um, So the Leah Clark is done. Oh, she's done. So that's okay. three. That's, that's three. three books. Yeah, we've got three out for her. Okay, yeah. right. Okay. And we'll see what else happens in the super girl. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm actually finishing the fourth book. Uh, I'm turning it on Saturday. I can't tell you what it is. They would, they would put know. me in prison. Okay. I mean, All I right. just... I won't okay. jeopardize your life yeah. by asking Okay, thank you. Much. Okay, all right. So, we, I end this interview with a little quiz. Okay. Oh, is it going to be, it's not going to be math, is it? Yes, okay, no, it's total no, math problems. We're going to do some okay. calculus, so you better have uh, it. Out. What was your favorite book when you were young? Oh, uh, Honestly, Katie John by Mary Calhoun. Oh, okay. Well, that's the first answer I've gotten for that one. Uh, okay, do you remember something in high school that has still stayed with you, something you really loved? Go Ask Alice. Oh. <laughs> you know, everybody was reading that. Yeah, was like, for yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. How about something when you were at USC that, you know, when you were majoring in English and humanities is what I thought. Wise blood. I was a oh. Flannery O'Connor freak. I read everything she wrote. I was just consumed by her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How about any book in your entire life that you've read that you could not be enough of an evangelist to tell people they had to read it? Well, I guess it would be uh, Look Homeward Angel. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I love that book, and I remember reading it. I was just out of college, and I, and I read that book, and, and I didn't want it to end, and I loved it so much, and I will never read it again. You know, sometimes I, that's how I feel. I'm afraid if I do it again, it won't, I won't feel it. Exactly, right. exactly, I, I, because I remember that, that feeling. Yeah. yeah. Okay, is there any classic you ever faked reading? Uh, well, okay. All right. So, <laughs> or any book. All right. So, um, <laughs> I downloaded the audiobook of War and Peace. Whoa! And I, I listen to books sometimes on audiobooks on on double speed. I know that's wrong, but um, so they sound like the chipmunks. They something? sound like the chipmunks, okay, but it, you know, because right. I, I, you know, I, I want to read so much that it's like any way I can get it. And so when I go running, you yeah. know. I'll listen to it. But I, I remember I was going on a trip. I was going to Italy, and I had War and Peace, and then I think I also had The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo on there. And what I didn't realize is I had shuttle or shift or whatever on my off, and I fell asleep listening to War and Peace. And when I woke up, it was Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, but I didn't know it. And I thought that War and Peace had taken a really weird, weird turn. Weird turn. Yeah. Yeah. He knows how yeah. To do, yeah. Yeah. Oh. But um, <laughs> so I've, I've, I've sort of read, listened to War and Peace, but I never did finish that. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's okay. Yes. And there's, yes. Yeah, you're not the only one. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about um, any book you ever read for its cover? Oh, wow. Um, maybe, um, where, where did, what is it, where'd you go, Bernadette? Oh, yeah. Where'd you go, Bernadette? Which I loved. Yes. I loved oh, that. that but so that, that cover was just very arresting. It was just so simple. Okay, how about a fictional world, if you could live in it, of any book you've read, that you just want to kind of, just kind of dwell there for uh, I, I wouldn't mind going to Hogwarts. Okay. Yeah, All that right. would be pretty cool. Yep. Okay, the last book you gave as a gift. Oh, my gosh. Um, I, 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 see, this is one of those, I give away books so... I know. Okay. I, give away, I give away books so often. The last book I gave away as a gift, probably Ex Libris. Ah, I, I buy those in volume, right. and I tend to yeah, give great. that away. Okay, do you remember something with, when your kids were young that you loved to curl up and read together? Uh, with my son, he loved Chugga Chugga Choo Choo. Uh, okay. And we read that we read that so many times, yeah. over and over. And then Good Night Moon with my daughter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, and what are you reading now? Right now I'm reading my very first Stephen King. Really? Well, other, other than on writing. I okay, read on writing. Right, right. And so I'm reading, uh, I'm going to get the title wrong. It's like 11 24. So I'm reading that one. And, oh, and it's, I had never read Stephen King before, and I thought, you know what? I, I should. Yeah. And yeah. so, oh, yeah. Well, great. And I'm really well, that, enjoying it. That's great. Wonderful. Okay, A plus. Yeah.
You think, did very oh, well. Oh, it passed. There, there was, was no math. math. Okay. okay. No, no fractions. In there. No, yeah. None of that. Thank you. Lisa, thank you so much. Thanks for sitting down and talking Oh, this has been me. fun. Thank and you. we can't wait for the next superhero girl to come. So come back and see us. I will. All right. Thank you. Great conversation with children's best-selling author Lisa Yee about her new series. It's about those superhero girls we all love from D.C., Wonder Woman and Supergirl at Superhero High. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed. Oh, <laughs>